Insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 24, Coping with Traumatic Stress. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my brilliant and delightful co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. Hi, Maddie. How you doing today? Pretty good. So before we get started, I wanted to pay homage to an event we went to last night. What did we, what did we do last night? We went to... Um, you and my first, wait, that's the correct grammar, right? Uh, we're not grammar police here. It's okay. Right. Well, we had our first Weird Al concert. Yes, we did. Not mommy, though, because she's one at least two, at least two. That's correct. So mommy was a bit of a veteran. We went to see Weird Al over at the Met in Philadelphia. And, uh was a very interesting concert. Yep, and, and I think interesting would be the good way to put it. Well, he's not called Weird Al for nothing. So today we're going to be talking about coping with traumatic stress. This was actually a topic that you had asked to uh, have on the podcast. So uh, we'll do our normal. We will define what traumatic stress is. Not surprising. We will talk about what traumatic events typically are. We'll look at the signs of traumatic stress. We'll look at some of the physical symptoms of traumatic stress. And we'll look at the long-term effects of traumatic events on teens. And then, as always, we will talk about how to deal with traumatic stress. Um, Got a lot to go through here. We will also talk briefly about when to seek treatment for traumatic stress, because a lot of the things that we talk about here are self-help things, uh, ways to help you cope with things. But sometimes you need to go for for professional help uh, when you can't cope with it, and traumatic stress tends to be one of those things. So there there are signs to look for uh, when you know that you can't deal with it on your own and you need to go seek professional help. Uh, and then I have a special note at the end that I did want to mention um, that's related to this topic. Ah. Uh, so, questions before we start? Nope. All right, let's get right into it then. So what is traumatic stress? Uh, This comes from a website called thehelpguide.org. It says traumatic stress is a normal reaction to a traumatic event such as a natural disaster, motor vehicle accident, plane crash, violent crime, or terrorist attack. Such events are extraordinarily uh, stressful not just for survivors, but also witnesses and even those repeatedly exposed to the horrific images of the traumatic event circulated on social media and news sources. It goes on to say, The intense, confusing, and frightening emotions that follow a traumatic event or natural disaster can be even more pronounced in children whether they directly experienced the traumatic event or were repeatedly exposed to horrific media images after the fact. While children and adolescents are more vulnerable to being traumatized than adults, the right support and reassurance, with the right support and reassurance, they are also able to recover faster. So, interesting thing to take away from that is that you don't have to be the subject of a stressful or violent encounter, but if you're exposed to it, it can cause 
traumatic stress in you. Um, and like it says, even though kids are more prone to of being affected by it, they're more equipped to, uh, to quickly, you know, um, bounce back from that. Um, and, and one good example of this where a lot of people weren't directly affected by it, but it affected a lot of people was the 9-11 attacks. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So you had several thousand people were killed in those attacks and their family members obviously were directly affected by it. But you, it was one of those things that was in the media for a very long time. And even now, when the anniversary comes around, there's a lot of remembrances for it that tend to trigger some of these traumatic stresses in people who were exposed to it. And, you know, there are people that weren't directly exposed to it who it still affects them. Um, so we'll talk about some of the things, some of the signs of that and, and how to how to deal with that. So any questions on what we're talking about when we say traumatic stress? Nope. Okay. So traumatic stress is often um, related to traumatic events, obviously. So a traumatic event can undermine a child's sense of security, leaving them feeling helpless and vulnerable, especially if the event stemmed from an act of violence, such as a physical assault, a mass shooting like we see in the news frequently, or a terrorist attack. Even kids or teens not directly affected by a disaster can become traumatized when repeatedly exposed to horrific images of the event on news and social media. And you know, every time there's a, a mass shooting or something like that, it's all over the news. It's almost impossible not to be exposed to it. Mm -hmm. Traumatic events can come in many forms that we can that can have significant impact on an adolescent. Here's a couple of examples. Now you tell me, I'll go down the list, and you tell me if you've experienced any of these and whether or not you think they've caused traumatic stress for you. Um, the first one is unexpectedly losing a loved one. And I would even um, include pets in this one. So have you had an experience where you've lost a loved one and that's caused traumatic stress? Mm -hmm. Can you give me a little detail? Like... Since you included pets, I'm going to say my cat Fluffer because I know a, a lot about it. So it was basically a normal day going on, and uh, Mommy was going to make me breakfast, so it, I was pretty happy. And then we saw Fluffer on the ground. She wasn't looking too well. I didn't know what was going on at the time because I was a little too young to understand it. But I'm sure Mommy knew what was happening. She was old and, well... I think today was that day. Yeah. And today she, was that day. She had not been well physically, yeah. So mommy had to stay home all day, and when we came home, um, she was in her arms, and mommy was actually going to take her to the vet to have her put down. Yeah, I remember that day. And, and the vet actually came to the house um, for us because our vet makes house calls. And... Uh, you know, we didn't want her suffering, and we wound up having the vet um, give her an injection that would help her pass painlessly. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that I think that had a traumatic uh, effect on everybody. Uh, so that's a very good example. Yeah, and to be honest, I can remember the one day after the incident, I couldn't stop crying again. Yeah, I know you had some, you had some concerns at school. And you were very emotional for it. And it's, you know, that type of thing takes its toll on us. It does. It makes me better this day. Yes. So the next thing that we had on the list itself was being involved in a natural disaster. Now, I don't think you've, you've been involved in any natural disasters. Uh, we've had some concerns you know, especially recently, we've had a number of, of very bad storms. We've been under tornado watches. Um, I know when we get that alert on the cell phone for the National Weather Service, uh, it can be very 
alarming. And we wind up downstairs in the basement to be careful. Um, and the one that came by fairly recently did some damage in our neighborhood. So it really hit close to home, even knocking a tree down on a couple of neighbors' houses. Um, have you had a traumatizing effect from any of any of those natural disasters? Well, I mean, I'm pretty sure I won't forget the one about the one recently because that's um, when I realized about how much danger I could have been in. I was learning about tornadoes and the dangers they cause, and when the electricity went out, I didn't enjoy it that much, and I, and I hated hearing the rain and the thunder. Yeah. Honestly, even though I know I'm sort of safe, th- lightning is just unexpected, and thunder still scares me to this day. I, I totally understand that. Uh, I've been through a couple of tornadoes, and uh, tornadoes can get very scary, Um because they spawn tornadoes and everything else, but hurricanes, hurricanes are frightening. Um, fortunately, where we live on the East Coast, we don't get too many dangerous earthquakes. Uh, we don't get uh, really tsunamis here or anything like that. So we'll get the occasional, you know, severe thunderstorm. We might get hit with a hurricane. Um, we might get hit with a blizzard. Um, but for the most part, I think we're fairly safe where we're at. Mm-hmm. The next one that we have on the list here is being involved in a motor vehicle accident. Have you ever been involved in a motor vehicle accident that has traumatized you? Well, no, but I have had you guys say when I was a baby, we were in a pretty bad accident, but I don't remember any of that. And I haven't really had... Um, any traumatic stress from any of the car accidents because I don't remember ever having a car accident except the one time where your car broke down and I was actually forced to sit up front, I think, when I was pretty young. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that doesn't qualify as an accident. Um, but yeah, fortunately, you were you were too young during the one accident we had. No one was hurt. The car was damaged. Um, mommy was driving at the time. Uh, and it was a rainy night, and somebody was driving too fast in the lane next to us. They hit a patch of water. They hydroplaned into our lane and basically bumped us off into uh, the median, uh, into the, the shoulder, rather. And there was a large hill that we basically plowed through that, that sort of stopped the car. So the car took a little bit of damage, but none of us were hurt, which was nice. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I know people that have been in car accidents, fairly severe car accidents, and it's caused such a level of stress that they don't even drive anymore and they're terrified to get into cars. Um, and going hand in hand with this would be being in a plane crash or a plane incident. Now I know you're not a big fan of flying, but not because you've had any kind of, you know, mishaps on the plane or anything like that, right? Mm -hmm. What's your, what's your issue with flying? I don't know. I just, ever since I learned about 9-11 and the dangers of what could happen if the plane actually crashes, I don't exactly want that to happen to me. I mean, I haven't actually been on it, but like you said before, if someone witnessed or heard about a plane accident or any type of accident, it could cause them traumatic stress. And I think um, after hearing, like, crashes of planes and how it could severely hurt you and mainly hearing about 9-11, I don't exactly want to be on a plane because I'm afraid of what would happen. Yeah, and and that's a good example of of non-related incidents inducing that traumatic stress because of the amount of exposure you've had to it. Uh, The next one they have here is being violently attacked. Uh, Fortunately, you've never had that happen to you, have you? Mm -hmm. Um, That can definitely cause traumatic stress. As a kid, you know, I can relate stories where I've been in fights, but there was only one incident where I was in high school and I was violently attacked by this one kid from behind and didn't even have a chance to defend myself. Um... And, you know, I didn't get, I wasn't permanently hurt by it, but 
you know, just that thought of someone sneaking up behind you and, and attacking you, you know, had me looking over my shoulder for a little while there. And, uh, and I can definitely say it caused some traumatic stress for a little while, but I might learn to deal with it. Mm -hmm. So, but, uh, there's a lot of violence in the world, unfortunately. And, and I don't think we're going to get rid of it anytime soon. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the last things in here is actually something that I had put in that wasn't even in the, the study because I know this has caused traumatic stress in people that I'm friends with. And that's having a major change or upheaval in your life. And a couple of examples here, one of which you can definitely relate to. One is moving to a new house. Do you remember when we moved into the house we're in now? Well, I remember very little of it, but... I do remember walking by this one house that was really high up, and I do remember um, we were in the kitchen at the dining table, and I was playing with a little frog, LPS, I think. Okay. And um, I don't really remember too much. I think I might remember walking in the basement, but I think that's pretty much it. I don't remember too much of it, but I can definitely say I won't forget um, some of the moments. Yeah, and there are people that I know who lived in one house all their life, and, you know, when they were in their late teens, their parents moved them to a new house, and it caused a lot of trauma for them. They they, they adapted poorly to the change. Honestly, um, I was, it was actually my third birthday when we moved. I didn't really, re I actually don't remember too much of our old house except, like, I don't really remember too much. I don't even remember what the layout was, but like, honestly, I only, I now only have real memories of being in this house and I don't really have memories of the old house. So not too much change. So that's good. So then you didn't, you didn't go through any stress for that. But one of the things that go hand in hand with moving to a new house is oftentimes you change schools as a result. Now, you're changing schools this year, but that's part of the natural progression. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't necessarily make it any less stressful for you, does it? No. So what are some of the things that's concerning you from a stress standpoint about the new school? Well, the thing is, um, I guess just having all the schools combined and having, like, everybody be there is, is kind of stressful. Also, having the... Switch classes. I mean, I knew I switched classes in my old school, but I only had two teachers, and I only switched a couple of times. Now I'll be switching for every single class, which will be stressful. I know that for a fact. I'll also have to change clothes for when we go to gym, and um, we don't have recess and a longer lunch and right. all the clubs and stuff and having to keep up with everything. Yeah, there's a lot of things to, to take into consideration when you, when you move to a new school like that. Mm -hmm. The last thing that we have on this, this list here was a major family change, such as a divorce, an adoption, or a new baby. Um, you've not had to go through any of those yet, have you? Mm -mm. So uh, I know I can speak from experience that bringing a new baby in to the family can cause some traumatic stress for any existing children. Um, a divorce definitely can cause traumatic stress. Mm -hmm. um, I was terrified as a child myself. Anytime my parents would have a fight or an argument, um, I was terrified of them getting a divorce. Like you just don't know what the future is going to be with stuff like that. So a lot of it's uncertainty. A lot of it is, um, you know, changes in routine, um, and a lot of it is loss. So, I mean, that's really what the source of a lot of the trauma events are. Mm -hmm. Anything to add to trauma events? Well, I do want to say another thing, being taking away, taken away from your family or being lost. Yes, that's a very good point because that did happen to you. Yep. So why don't you tell us about that? Well, it was a pretty normal day. We were, actually, we were actually at Disney, and we were at Magic Kingdom. It was getting late, and you were kind of getting tired, but me and Mommy still wanted to stay at the park, so you decided to go back to um, the uh, hotel, which was probably, which probably also caused the stress I had. 
Um, so there was this run ride I never went on, Space Mountain, and Mari recommended me to try it, so I did because I was the only one in the family who liked riding roller coasters. And since Mari was never on it because she hates riding roller coasters, and since I've never been on it, she didn't realize there were two different exits. So I was on the ride. I don't remember too much of the ride. I just remember, like, like blue lights and, like, the track and how it always twisted and turned. After the ride, I real um I saw I saw there were two different ways to exit, but a bunch of people were going up like a broken ramp, moving ramp. So I followed them because I thought that's where mommy would be. So I ended up in the shop, but when I saw when I didn't see mommy was there, I panicked. I ran outside, didn't see her. I began to cry. Luckily, this one woman and her daughter saw me crying and um decided to help me. We went up to a cast member. Luckily, I knew my mom's phone, mommy's phone number at the time, at the time, so she called her, and then eventually we met up. Because, and I was actually really scared because I didn't know what to do because I didn't know where mommy was, and I didn't have a phone. And you were back at the hotel, and I didn't know how to get back without mommy, and I didn't want to leave her. Right. So, but then we got back together, and I think I will never forget. How I got lost that day. Yeah, and that's scary. And that's that certainly had a significant impact on you. Yeah, and I actually refused to ride Splash Mount, a uh, Space Mountain, for a while. Yeah. So, but you know, and since then we've taken certain precautions, right? You've got a cell phone that you carry with you now in the event that you do get separated. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I always make sure it's on me whenever I go on a roller coaster because you guys don't go on roller coasters. Right. Um, you also know to go seek out a cast member in the event that you do get lost. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so we've we've sort of learned our lesson from that, you know, as a family. And luckily, um, our last trip, I was actually brave enough to go back on Space Mountain, and I basically faced my fear, and I'm no longer afraid to go on it anymore. Good for you. That's a good example of overcoming traumatic stress. Then. So let's talk about, when we come back, the signs of traumatic stress. So the first one on the list here is shock and disbelief. You may have a hard time accepting accepting the reality of what happened. Um, In your traumatic experience events, is that one of the symptoms that you experience? Yeah, mainly with, like, um, the... Space Mountain one. Every any time I've ever been lost, I just can't accept it. I'm just terrified of it, and I just can't accept it. Right, and that leads us into the next one: is fear that uh, the same thing will happen again. Your fear that the same thing will happen again, over and over, and you lose control or break down. Well, that fear is what stopped you from going on the ride anymore. Mm-hmm. And that's all actually a similar thing to one kickball game where um, I kicked the ball and this one kid wanted to get me up by rolling the ball, but he rolled it too soon. I tripped over the ball and slid it across um, the um, sand because there was sand. I just remember a bunch of sc- when I opened my eyes, there was sand and tears in them, yeah. and I could barely see the people in front of me. And I actually really. And I think that's how I grew my hate of kickball. Yeah, it's kind of soured you on the sport, hasn't it? Mm-hmm. Uh, sadness, particularly if people you know died. So I think that was pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, I think we were all sad when, when Fluffer, Fluffer passed. Mm-hmm. Helplessness, the sudden unpredictable nature of violent crimes, accidents, or natural disasters may leave you feeling vulnerable and helpless. Lightning, you know, our fear of lightning. Both your and my Mm -hmm. fear of lightning is a good example of that. Yeah. Guilt. Now, this is probably one you've not experienced. uh, But in crimes and and accidents and stuff, one of the things that the survivors feel is called survivor guilt. Guilt that you survived when others died or that you could have done more to help. So that's definitely a sign of traumatic stress. Mm -hmm. And anger. You may be angry at God or others. You feel irresponsible for the stress that they, you've been put on. Have you ever had a sense of anger? Like, were you were you angry about the kickball? Were you angry about Space Mountain or anything? 
No, I never actually felt angry. I mean, Space Mountain, it was just like an accident because neither of us were on the ride before and we didn't know what was going on, so I shouldn't be angry for anyone about that. Kickball, I am a little upset at the kid, but um, I didn't really know the kid, but I still don't really forgive him for doing that. Even though I know it was also an accident, I still will not forgive him for it. What about shame, especially over feelings or fears you can't control? Is there a sense of shame to that? Um, I do feel a little bit shameful when I'm when I um my with my fear of thunder and lightning. I just feel as though like I know thunder won't hurt you. It's just a sound after lightning, and I just feel like I'm like people will laugh at me because I just hate that I'm afraid of the sound. Right. That. And it won't hurt me. Yeah, no. yeah. And, you know, it, it's hard to have fears and admit to those fears. I think that's one of the bravest things to do is to admit to those fears mm-hmm. and, and to not be shameful of them because everybody has fears. And fear is a natural human reaction to danger, and it helps to keep it, keep us safe. Mm-hmm. And the last thing that's on here is a, a logical conclusion is relief. You may feel relieved that the worst is over, and even hopeful that your life will return to normal. Yeah, that's how I felt after, like, me and Mommy found each other. I felt hopeful that everything would be okay, but I also didn't... I also no longer wanted to go on Space Mountain, and for a while you guys make fun, made fun of me for it. Oh, yeah, we didn't make fun of you, sweetie. We you called it Lost Mountain. All right, so we did make fun of you. So, all right, I don't pretend to be the best parent in the world. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about some of the physical symptoms of traumatic stress. So these should be fairly quick. So trembling or shaking, have you ever experienced that from a trauma? Well, yes, from kickball. Anytime I was close to being up for kicking, I would always shake or tremble and feel weak. Uh, how about a pounding heart? I guess that's pretty common, right? Yeah, also from um, from the Space Mountain when I was lost, I could feel my heart pounding. Well, oh, rapid breathing, too? Yeah. Rapid breathing along with kickball as well. What about a lump in your throat or feeling choked up? Kickball, yes, and yeah. probably Space Mountain. Uh, how about your stomach tightening or churning? Yeah, that's pretty much kickball. For you. Okay. Uh, have you ever felt dizzy or faint during one of these events? Space Mountain and I think a little bit of kickball. Well, so yeah, you were definitely experiencing some traumatic stress there. Um, cold sweats? Yep. Yeah. Probably from both experiences. And like racing thoughts like your mind's trying to get away from you. Uh, yeah, um, Space Mountain. Yeah. And I'll tell you, I experienced a lot of these the last time I happened to be in the hospital. I had the bilateral pulmonary embolisms, the blood clots on my lungs. And um, I didn't actually experience stress until they came. the doctor came to me. And one, told me how bad the blood clots were. He was amazed that I was still alive, that my blood clots were that bad. And he said... The only treatment that he would recommend at this point in time, they could put me on blood thinners and hope that the blood clots broke up safely, or they could put me on this um, prototype medicine that he referred to as a clot buster. And he said, you know, that should clear up the clots in 24 to 48 hours, but because of the effect that it has on your body, it could cause breeding in the brain. bleeding in the brain um, and a certain percentage of, of people that have the bleeding in the brain, it turns out to be fatal. So it was sort of at that point that the stress kind of hit me at that point. Um, and ironically enough, it was largely because I knew I wasn't getting out of the hospital until these things have been resolved and they, I was in intensive care and they weren't going to let you or Sam in to see me in intensive care. So my fear was that I was going to be one of those small percentages that didn't survive and I wouldn't even have a chance to see you guys 
you know, before that point got there. And that's really what got me stressed out over the whole thing. But uh, fortunately, things worked out. They gave me the medicine, and uh, everything worked out in the end. I but, mean, I do remember waiting with Sam in the waiting room. Yeah. And yeah. I remember also seeing you when you were out of intensive care, and I remember just when we had the babysitter, um, we had the calls, and you were like, you had like breathing tubes all around you. Yeah, I remember at one point in time they put the uh, <coughs> the respirator mask on me, and mommy thought it was funny and took a picture because she thought I looked like Darth Vader. So, so glad mommy could have fun at my expense there. But that's probably the most traumatic experience I think I've had in a in a long time. So there are long term effects, and we'll talk about those in a minute. It's important to note that the long-term effects of traumatic events manifest differently at different age levels. A five-year-old child may regress into their behavior to younger ages to cope with the effects, while a 10-year-old may develop unfounded fears or physical manifestations of ailments, and a teenager may relive the trauma through flashbacks. It's important to understand how trauma affects kids at different ages so you can recognize the symptoms and handle them appropriately. We're going to limit this discussion on the common effects of teens from the ages of 12 through 17. Okay. So one of the long-term effects is having flashbacks of the event, nightmares or sleep problems. Uh, have you ever had any flashbacks of any of the trauma that you've experienced? Well, I've had flashbacks of the kickball game whenever I'm up at kickball and I just remember like how I tripped, slid across the ground and just got injured pretty bad. Like reliving the event. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some people avoid reminders of the event. Do you try to avoid, well, I mean, obviously you try to avoid Space Mountain, right? Yeah, I tried to avoid Space Mountain for a while because I didn't want to get lost again. Yeah, and the one thing for me related to that, the hospital that I was in when I had the, the PEs <clears throat> was actually on uh, the same road that I used to drive to work. So for about six months, I drove to work a different way completely unaware of why I was doing it. Subconsciously, my, I, I, my brain wouldn't let me drive past the hospital because of the stress that I had endured there. And it wasn't until like six months later that I realized I was driving a different path and kind of figured out why I was, why I was doing that. Mm. Um, one of the other coping mechanisms people have is they turn to drugs and alcohol for that to try to cope with that because it, it numbs the pain. And I think it's important to be aware of that and to steer yourself clear of that because that's just going to cause more problems. It's not going to solve anything. Yeah. Uh, some people act disruptive or disrespective or destructive. Have you had any any outbursts like that as, as a result of your traumatic events? I don't think so, no. That's good. How about physical complaints? Did you find you were having any physical ailments after any of your things? What do you mean by that? Oh, did your stomach bother you, or did you get headaches or anything like that after a trauma? Uh, trauma? Well, I felt dizzy after um, the Space Mountain one, and after me and Mommy had gotten popcorn, I still felt like a little dizzy after the event. Yeah. How about feelings of guilt or isolation or depression? Don't think so. Uh, well, actually, um, I guess from Fluffer, from Fluffer's death, I didn't... I didn't ha have a good time getting over it. Yeah. Um, has any trauma caused you to lose interest in hobbies that you previously enjoyed? Um, I don't think so because I didn't enjoy sports at the beginning. Right. So um, I, I think I actually just stayed farther away from sports due to um, the kickball game. Yeah, it may have distanced you more, but like from Space Mountain... You didn't stop going to Disney. You just stopped going on Space Mountain. Yeah. Yeah. And the last one here, and this is 
probably the most concerning is some people, when they go through these things, they come out of them and they have suicidal thoughts, you know, thoughts about harming themselves or killing themselves. Um, you've not experienced anything like that? Nope, not at all. No, that's good. Um, so that's just an example of some of the long-term effects. Uh, when we come back, we'll talk about some ways to deal with traumatic stress. Usually the unsettling thoughts and feelings of traumatic stress, as well as any unpleasant physical symptoms, start to fade as life returns to normal over the days or weeks following a traumatic event. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Um, however, it's important to remember that people react in different ways to trauma. So if someone that you're close with has experienced a traumatic event, it's one of those things is you don't rush them to heal. You know, mm -hmm. you have to be patient with them. Uh, there's no right or wrong way to respond. Um, we're all different, so don't tell yourself or anyone else what you should be thinking, feeling, or doing. One of the first things that people try to do when someone's in a situation like that is they try to empathize with them. You know, they'll say things like, I know how you feel or something like that. And, and that can have a negative effect on people because after a traumatic event, you do feel isolated. You, you do feel like, especially if it was just you affected in a, in a violent event or, you know, the death of a loved one, you don't feel like other people can relate to you at that point in time. Mm -hmm. So if you're helping someone get through a traumatic experience, don't try to put yourself in their place. Try to be there to be supportive for them. Um, Avoid obsessively reliving the traumatic event. Repetitious thinking or viewing horrific images over and over can overwhelm your nervous system, making it harder to think clearly. Partake in activities that keep your mind occupied. Read, watch a movie, cook, play with your kids, play with your parents in your case. Um, so you're not dedicating all your energy and attention to the traumatic event. One of the things a lot of people do is obsess over those traumatic events and that obsession tends to you know weigh down on them mm -hmm. um, ignoring your feelings will slow recovery it may seem better in the moment to avoid experiencing your emotions but they exist whether you're paying attention to them or not even intense feelings will be, will pass if you simply allow yourself to feel what you feel you know if you're feeling sadness it's okay if you're feeling fear, it's okay. They're all natural reactions, and you can't ignore them. You have to, you have to experience them. You have to deal with them. Mm -hmm. Reestablish a routine. You know, there is comfort in the familiar. After a disaster, getting back as much as you can to your normal routine will help minimize traumatic stress, anxiety, and hopelessness. Even if your work or school routine is disrupted, you can structure your day with regular times for eating, sleeping, spending time with family, and relaxing. So getting back into that groove that we, you were in before after something like that happens. You know, with the passing of Fluffer, you have this overwhelming feeling of sadness. And you don't want to be bothered with other people. And you want to go off on your own and stuff like that. That's not healthy. You know, if, if, if you're allowing it to break your routine like that. So you have to be a little bit more cognizant of, of your own needs. Uh, recognize when traumatic stress becomes PTSD. Do you know what PTSD is? PTSD is post-traumatic stress disorder. And this can be, it's a psychological effect of a stressful event. Um, you hear a lot about it in uh, first responders or um, the military where they've been placed in these extremely stressful situations where life is on the line. And when they come back, they can't cope with it emotionally. I mean, most human beings can't cope with stuff that stressful emotionally. And it takes an effect on their physical and mental health. Um, if your traumatic stress sy symptoms don't ease up and your nervous system remains what they call stuck or unable to move on, 
from the event for a prolonged period of time, you may experience PTSD, in which case then you need to talk to a professional about that. Um, you know, there are special counselors and, and doctors out there that treat just that. Mm-hmm. Um, while symptoms of the stress often naturally fade with time, the following tips can assist in the process and help you better come to terms with it. Minimize media exposure. Stop watching that school shooting if it's causing you stress. Mm -hmm. Engage, you know, and this is for parents, engage your child. If your child has been bullied at school or has had uh, an experience of being lost or any of the issues or a death in the family, engage with your child. Talk to them. Sit with them. Spend time with them. Let them, you know, unleash their fears and frustrations on you. Um, encourage physical activity. A lot of times the best way of bouncing out of a, uh, stressful situation is to, to get physical, work out, go for a walk, push a wall, punch a pillow, you know, something like that. It's that pent up energy that has to, you have to put that somewhere. So if you can put that in the physical activity, it's less you trying to bottle up, um, a healthy diet. You know, that, that topic has come up many times to deal with stress. Uh, your body goes through chemical changes when you go through a stressful situation. And having a proper diet allows your body to physically cope with it better. Um, and then the last thing they have here is to rebuild trust and safety. Everybody wants to be feel safe. And a lot of times these traumatic incidents threaten that safety. Whether it's your kickball incident or getting lost at Disney or a school shooting or 9-11 or whatever it is, it disrupts that feeling of safety that we have. So a lot of times after a traumatic event, you sort of need to pull the loved ones closer together to you there. Get that blanket feeling of safety back in there and that'll help you deal with the stress itself. Um, Questions? Nope. Okay. So when we come back, we'll talk about when you should seek treatment for your stress. Unfortunately, I don't think you've ever reached the point where you've had to re- seek outside help. Mm-hmm. Um, usually feelings of anxiety, numbness, confusion, guilt, and despair following a disaster or a traumatic event will start to fade within a relatively short time. However, if your traumatic stress reaction is so intense and persistent that it's getting in the way of your ability to function, um, you may need help from a mental health professional, uh, preferably a trauma specialist. So if six weeks have passed and you're still not feeling any better, it might be time to find help. Um, if you're having trouble functioning at school, like if your day-to-day function just isn't working correctly, you may need to talk to someone. If you're experiencing terrifying memories, uh, nightmares or flashbacks, that's a sign of something that's a little bit deeper that you need to, to work through. Um, if the symptoms of traumatic stress manifest as physical complaints, We talked about headaches and stomach pains or sleep disturbances. Then we need to talk to someone to try and work through those. If you're having an increasingly difficult time relating to your friends and family. Now, this isn't making new friends. This is the friends you have and the family you have. If you're getting into arguments too often, if they're annoying you too much, there may be some underlying stress that we need to work through. If you're experiencing suicidal thoughts, that's not something to play around with. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Um, And if you're avoiding more and more of the things that remind you of the traumatic event. For instance, if you just decided you don't want to go to Disney anymore. When it's clear that you loved Disney before the event then that avoidance is a trigger point of time to go see someone. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and there's different people that you can see. You have counselors at school that can help. Uh, they can refer you to someone or they can help you directly. You have your pediatrician, your regular 
primary care physician. You can talk to them and they can diagnose, especially if you're having physical symptoms, they can diagnose them and determine if it's stress related or not. Um, but ultimately you'll wind up talking to a professional if it becomes too bad, psychologists, psychiatrist, um, trauma counselors, in the event of uh, natural disasters or school shootings, one of the things you'll hear in events like that is they make counselors available for the students and the people in the area affected. And those people are specially trained to help deal with traumatic stress. So we've not gotten to that point. Hopefully we never will get to that point. Um, but if we do, at least we know the signs that will trigger that. Mm -hmm. So I want to come back with a quick special note, and then uh, we'll move on to uh, your closing remarks and shout outs. Mm -hmm. So the one thing that I wanted to call special attention to here is suicide. Okay, we've, we've not done a podcast on it. We probably will at some point in time. But one of the things that comes out of traumatic events a lot is suicide. And any talk of suicide is significant, okay? So take any suicidal talk or behavior seriously. Even if you don't think the person is going to do it, if nothing else, it's a sign that they need help. And if they don't get that help, then something can happen. Uh, it's not just a warning sign that your teen is thinking about suicide. It is a cry for help. Um, so please read the suicide prevention or call the suicide helpline um, in the U.S. Uh, call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-8255. The U.K., call Samaritans at 08457 Nine oh nine oh nine oh Australia call the lifeline at thirteen eleven fourteen and all other countries you can visit the International Association for Suicide Prevention at www.iasp.info. Um, do not take any talk or suggestion of suicide lightly. It's very important to take it seriously and to seek help and help the people out. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's come back with your closing remarks and your shout outs. I turn it over to you. Thank you. So for those out there who have experienced traumatic stress, um, I do recommend going and talking to someone about it. If it, if it happened a while ago and you're still having trouble coping with it, I'd recommend going to someone who you who cares about you and who you care about and hopefully they'll be able to help you. I also recommend seeing other people if it gets to a really bad point. And also please don't try and think that you should kill yourself because of the cause of an event. Yes, it's stressful. Yes, it's going to be hard to get out of your brain, but I'm sure all of us have go are going or have gone through traumatic stress with certain actions of our life. Okay, very good. How about shout outs? Who are we shouting out to today? Um, I'm going to give a shout out to you and mommy. You two were there for me for when I was lost in Space Mountain. You helped me cope with that stress and eventually I was able to get over the stress of being on Space Mountain and I was able to go on it. You were also able to help me deal with Fluffer's loss, along with the stress from the kickball game. Okay, very good. And I think that does it for us today. Uh, thank you for listening. This was a bit of a hard-hitting topic this week. Uh, hopefully next week we'll come back with something uh, a little bit more fun. Yeah. And uh, I think that's it for today. Bye, everyone. Bye.